Well, welcome back, guys, to another yet another time loop. Uh, it is interesting to see what's going on with, you know, with all these skits and everything. I think it's kind of funny. But at the same time, it's like I'm also wondering what's going on with characters like Karen and Avenger and Bazette. But we have especially Karen. Karen is probably the most um, uh, probably the most suspicious character, I would say. But we have no idea what, you know, what's going on with her, really. Um, okay, so I I was going to hang around the Emmy residence, but I don't know. I guess we should go to school today, guys, because it doesn't look like there, there's really anything happening, like, anywhere else. I, I'm, I'm, like, looking for important events that might potentially progress the plot. Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess let's just go to the archery range and see what's going on there with Sakura. There's still a little time before class starts, so let's go see how the archery club is doing. Sakura, the new team captain, left the house first thing in the morning. Sometimes she still makes me lunch, even though she has her own to deal with. Even with all that, she has no trouble handling club activities. The title of Miss Perfect is more appropriate for Sakura, or it should be. But what's with this gloomy atmosphere? Maybe practice is over, or maybe there just weren't that many members to begin with, but I can only spot Sakura and Mitsuzuri inside. I bow at the entranceway, and just as I'm about to enter, from where I am, it looks like a pretty serious conversation. My chance to escape is starting to slip away. That's what I think, senpai. But that's your own problem. It may seem like I'm being cold, but it's not something that will go away by itself, you know. Yes, you're right. Sakura's problem. Sounds quite complicated. Even I don't have the nerve to cut in here. I quietly go outside so they wouldn't notice. And then you get caught by somebody. Yep, you got caught by Mrs. Uri. Emya, you heard our conversation, didn't you? As I leave the dojo, I hear Mrs. Uri's voice from behind. What, you realized I was there? Yeah, although from where Mata was, she probably couldn't see you. I see. Keep up the good work. But it is a bit of a tricky situation. Saying that, Mitsuzuri folds her arms. Regarding Sakura? Huh? That's not it. Weren't we talking about how to get a sense of oneness within the group? Mitsuzuri said an unfamiliar word. Oneness? Wow, your face says that's the first time you've heard that word. Just so you know, it's got nothing to do with onions. I can at least figure out that it's not food on my own. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but she's not the type to push people around her forward, right? She always seems to draw back and respect everyone else's opinions. And that's bad? No, not bad at all, but, but she doesn't want to stay like that herself. Oh? Well, that means she's got her own will as a leader now. Isn't that a good thing? In that respect, it's a relief for me, too. But she wants to throw away that security and aim higher. It's her own matter to deal with. And that's where oneness comes in. Yep. So, for example, had Mato been a good for nothing like Makadera, everyone could have been like, let's all support the captain. But lately, she's been so reliable, there's been no opportunity for even that, see? So you're worried that if she's too flawless, the club members will lose interest. She nods with a difficult expression. So I was wondering if there wasn't some kind of shindig we could have that would bring the whole club together. Shindig, huh? The peculiar choice of wording does give me an idea of her mental state. But what kind of club event, or shindig, would make the club feel a sense of oneness? As we continue talking, we hear the first bell. We have to get to class soon. You're still in your uniform. Will you make it? Oh, I'm fine. I'm skipping first period. I see. Wait, that's not funny at all. Run! <laughs> but even after she's retired from active duty, coming out here in the morning just to help with morning practice and talk with Sakura, Mitsuzuri sure looks out for everyone. A sense of oneness, huh? Yeah, gotta tell her if I come up with any ideas. So I guess we're gonna have a big party at, uh, for the archery club. Uh, there's another new event at the archery range, but... Um, and there's no new events anywhere else, so I guess that's the only thing we can do is go back to the archery range. I stop by the archery dojo. During lunch break, Sakura does the preparations for club activities here. Uh, hello, senpai. Just as I thought, the new archery club captain was already hard at work. 
Yo, on the job, even at lunchtime. Eh? Ah, no, not really. I only came here to eat lunch today. I see. I thought it's about time for the upcoming tournament practice. I've heard that at the champion schools, even at lunchtime, they take their bows and try to fill up the training logs. The archery club at Homarahara isn't normally that strict, but that can't be said about this season. That's right. It's about time for the fall tournament. Mitsuzuri told me a lot about it last year, too. Like how we weren't sufficiently represented. We certainly could have done better, but I think we're set to go pretty far this year. The freshmen do have some skill among them. From the rumors I've heard, she's probably talking about Mitsuzuri's younger brother. At any rate, Sakura's smile looks promising. Oh, by the way, do you always eat lunch here? Yes, managing the dojo is my job. Besides, I also keep the key. Good job. So, Sakura's lunchbox is, well, that sure is an awful lot of food for just one person. S why don't you come and join me for lunch, senpai? Is that alright? Did you bring enough for me too? Yes, I prepared enough for you as well. You came just as I was thinking about inviting you over here, so I'm glad. That helps. Well then, I'll gladly take up your offer. Okay, then please come in. It sure is nice and cool here in the fall. Unlike the windswept roof, there are walls on three sides. It's just perfect. Now then, I sit on the plank floor at the back of the dojo. It's my first time having lunch here. Seems that Mitsuzuri and Tosika often drink tea here though. Ah, uh, I'll bring a floor cushion. No, it's fine. A former club member sitting here comfortably on a cushion would certainly get laughed at by Mitsuzuri and the others. Oh, alright. But you're a guest, so it should be okay. Sakura's the current captain. There's no way I'll sit on one while she's around. Yet she still keeps on fidgeting and won't settle down. How about the referee seat, senpai? It's kind of odd to be having a meal on that tatami. Here is fine. Right, well then, let's eat. Sitting down on the floor beside me, Sakura passes me the lunchbox. Whoa, there's a lot of food in here. Thanks for the lunch, I'm always getting favors from you. Oh no, it's no big deal really. Picking up my chopsticks, I open the box. Salmon on top of white rice and chicken stew, distinctly Japanese style. Sorry, there was a lot of leftover ingredients after breakfast. No, no, that's only to be expected, seeing how busy you are. Wouldn't be the first time I'm eating the same thing for breakfast and lunch, either. After getting off my part-time job, I was exhausted and usually didn't have the energy to fix something different for lunch. All of that changed when Sakura came. Fujine probably wouldn't realize she's eating the same thing three times a day. Really? I thought Fujimura-sensei was rather picky about those things. Fujine is mainly concerned about whether she can fill her stomach or not. Oh, right. I should make a lunchbox for her sometime, too, shouldn't I? She'd be happy, no doubt, but it's best not to spoil her. If it becomes a habit, the old story might repeat itself. <sighs> you have it rough too, don't you, senpai? I nodded as I chewed thoroughly on the sweet salmon. Still full of flavor despite being chilled, with a Japanese-style lunchbox this good, Sakura's cooking is exceeding all expectations. Ryder should really learn to make lunch too. I don't know. If I said something, she'd silently do it for me, but it would just be like an obligation and wouldn't seem very fun. It would be great if Ryder could cook with me, but... Ah, uh, but I do learn the most from you, senpai. Looks like Sakura thought she hurt my feelings and is trying to hide it with a smile. It's fine. Even with three people in the kitchen, it'll work out somehow. Continuing to consume our respective lunches, I suddenly noticed something. Could it be? Sakura, did you mix up the boxes by chance? Huh? Really? But the chopsticks are in there! Hmm? I guess. I just had a feeling that your box is bigger. It may be because it was on top of Sakura's small thighs, but her lunchbox looked really large. <laughs> were you paying attention to the lunchbox or her thighs? <laughs> but even if I were to mix them up, they're the same. Both the size and contents? Ah, that must be why it looked bigger. Wait, but then... Ah, I thought you would eat a lot less. Uh, <laughs> but if you had the same amount as I did, wouldn't you get hungry in the afternoon? That's why. I see. But even then, isn't that a lot? Her lunch had at least 80% more than the amount I had. 
Uh, it's normal. Normal. I can totally eat this much. Normal. I see. So that's normal. I often hear about girls skipping lunch entirely, but... Yeah, I guess I'm always exercising, and so I can eat a lot. Hmm. So the secret to losing weight isn't cutting back on what you eat, but rather using more energy. Wait, but it doesn't seem like Sakura is really worried about that. In fact... A and also, I'm still a growing girl. Sakura is still growing. When she tells me something like that, it makes me wonder what part of her she's referring to. <laughs> well, there's one part that I think has grown quite a bit, or has at least grown enough. <laughs> Without realizing it, I stopped moving my chopsticks and looked down. This is not good. This fantasy is not appropriate for a sacred archery dojo. <laughs> Senpai, was the salt on the salmon too strong? Oh, no, it's delicious. Your cooking is great. I was just thinking a little about what you said, you know, about you still growing. Um, you know, I was just thinking if you can really get taller at this age. Sounds like excuses to me, buddy. You're a lot taller than you were a long time ago, right, Senpai? So you probably still can, right? I'd like to be taller, but there's no way to train myself for it, so I guess there's nothing I can do. You worry about it too much. Even the way you are right now, you're still reliable. I feel like I can depend on you, Senpai. It's blatant flattery, but I'm still glad to hear it. Right now, there's nothing I can do but stay focused. If I become strong enough to lift Sakura up with one arm, maybe I'd be able to accept her compliments sincerely. Uh, would you like me to pour you some tea? Oh, yes please. We still have time, so why don't we have a short rest before going back? Alright, senpai. Oh my god. She's still growing, her her her. Okay, so we have part-time job or whatever is going on with Elia. I say we talk to Elia. We don't really talk to her that often. Classes are over and it's about time to go home. There's still some time before work. I'll go meet up with Issei and see if there's anything that needs to be done. Seems there's been a lot of work deferred after all. Oh boy. Why are you here? Ah, uh, Shiro! <laughs> What's this? I unconsciously rubbed my eyes. Did Ilya come all the way here? Not the archery dojo? I Ilya, why are you here? Just for fun, Onichan. She clamps onto me with a sweet smile, looking around in panic while a little girl with silver hair and crimson eyes clings onto me. I must look like a criminal to everyone here. <laughs> yep. Huh? No one notices. The underclassman passing by only sees me panicking and doesn't even glance at Ilya, who's attached to me from the chest down. What's going on? Simple. I just divert their glances elsewhere, where I show them a completely different image. A contradiction would occur, so... Oh, I thought... I, I kind of figured it was magic. She was using some kind of magic on them or some sort of suggestion. Ilya nods towards the crowd. They just move their eyes away from me. This way I can easily deal with a lot of people. Everyone's unconsciously looking elsewhere, so that's why nobody notices. So, Ilya could just run around and do whatever she wants and nobody would be, would be able to see her. I see. This is certainly Ilya-style magic. Maybe Amagus would be able to see her, though. Had she come to the archery dojo, there wouldn't be a problem, but in the school building, you'd need a reason, permission from the teaching staff, and... What's happening, Emiya? There has been a commotion outside the door for some time. The chief of the student council room, Issei, suddenly appears. And it's not me he's looking at, but straight at Ilya. Did the eye-averting spell not work? Hey, Issei. The spell is still active, and Issei, for sure, should be tricked by the illusion, or so you'd think. Ilya bows elegantly. I'm sorry for the unsightly display you may have noticed. I'm Ilias Field. For troubling you with my sudden visit, I humbly beg your pardon. I am undeserving of such a polite greeting. I humbly serve as the school student council president, Ryudo Issei. Yes, I have had the privilege of hearing about you from Shiro. Right, Onichan? Ignoring the polite exchange a moment ago, Ilya turns back into her own self the instant she faces me. Worse, she just goes and hugs me around the waist. His suspicions double instantly. Cold sweat running down my back, I let her do as she wants. 
it's a long story, Issei. It's sort of, um... That's right, Issei. Shiro is my older brother, okay? Issei's cold gaze in the fluffy, soft Ilya. And between them is me, a metal barrier, in imminent danger of being destroyed by the extreme temperature change. <laughs> Oni-chan, is it Emya? Yeah, so what? Emya, come here for a moment. Uh-oh. I might have to call the police, Emya. This time, Ilya has peeled off me and we go to a corner of the student council room. Emya. That Ilya's feel, pretending to be your sister, looks quite foreign to me. Uh, she really is Kiritsugu's daughter, I'm sure of it. You know that I was adopted, right, Issei? Hmm, so that's it. Sorry. Probably thinking that he inadvertently intruded into private matters, Issei apologizes meekly. One thing's for sure, Emiya family relationships are certainly complex. She looks aristocratic, yet she calls you Onichan. That's just how it is. Sorry for the trouble. Oh, no, that's fine. It certainly is hard to imagine you escaping from a crime scene. Wait, what? <laughs> well done. Crime scene. Well, I have to admit, Ilya calling me Onichan does raise some suspicions. But know this, Emya. This is no good. That sister of yours, the aura she gives off is the same as Tosaka's. He's surprisingly sharp. That's no ESP. That's a well-trained eye that has observed many a female student over the years, probably. And not gotten with any of them. Tosaka may be the one causing headaches now, but I fear that sister will surely bewitch you one day. No good, Imya. Should you lose your way, as though walking through a dark, foggy night, your feet will easily fall into a treacherous hole. Therefore, remember to purify the six roots of perception. That's so mean, Shiro. When did she get here? And in a foul mood, too. Getting compared to Tosca must have irritated her even more than being called an evil influence on me. <laughs> However, Issei, you're wrong on one count. It's not just Rin. Aren't all girls evil beings, actually? What, what would you be saying, that... Even Kazuki, whom you respect so much, didn't an evil witch deceive him, too? <laughs> Says the devilish kid with but a hint of a smirk on her face. These charms are about to get worse this year. Come to think, I also object to the unjust slander towards Castor-san, to say nothing of a man like Soichiro being bewitched. Well, I don't care about Kazuki the tough, but Onichan's heart and body are already mine. Oh, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> And so Ilya, not satisfied with having invited a great amount of misunderstanding, completely oblivious to Issei's disapproving eyes, clings right on to me. Whoa, I Ilya! Fine, so it is true, an evil girl has charmed Emya. <laughs> Onichan is already mine, and I won't give him up, not even to Rin, and not even to Saber. Ah, calm down! Oh man, this was, this was definitely worth it. Ah, that was fun. Teasing that Issei guy was so worth it. I sort of understand how Castor and Rin feel now. Ilya nods with satisfaction. Afterwards, having barely managed to contain Issei's panic, we ended up having a tea party with Ilya. Ilya, literally one explosive little girl, completely blew away Issei, the problem in question. Tosaka alone is enough to give him a nervous breakdown, so don't bully him. His job is difficult enough as it is. Ilya is roaming carefree around the school, yet no one sees her. I wonder if it really is okay. It's still unnatural after all. Of course I know. Since you say so, I'll try not to get too carried away. Ugh, I hope I didn't look as if I was enjoying it. No matter how you put it, there was a great misunderstanding. This will have to be rectified later. There's no need. It's not like any part of what I said is a lie. What I told Issei was nothing but truth. Truth, you say? Well, Sabres and Rin's opinion aside, the part about me being completely yours, even as an expression of sisterly affection, it went just a tad bit too far. But you're still my only Onichan, right? So even from way back when I was born, you were mine. Uh, but perhaps I'm the only one who thinks that way. Uh, that's... Actually, I've just realized how much of an idiot I am. That's exactly what she meant when she claimed me as her own. Even without blood ties, she, she still entrusted me with the responsibility of being her big brother. Sorry, Ilya. Yeah, I'm your brother. Just kidding. Shiro, so naive. Good.
got me again. I start to wonder if I was born just to be teased by Ilya. <laughs> the fact that I trust you is true, though. But seeing Onichan's troubled face is just too funny. If it looks like something's worrying you too much, I'll be sure to help. That much is natural. It's funny because Ilya is more like Shiro's big sister, if anything. <laughs> That's why Shiro being Shiro, I can't just leave you. That's what I meant by Onichan being mine. Ugh. <sighs> I give up. Well, if that's what she meant by he's mine, I should be kind of proud, I guess. Shiro, where are you going? Archery club. They'll probably bring out tea if you come along. Fujine introduced Ilya to everyone in the club. Being a young foreign lady, there's no doubt she is kept well entertained even in the middle of a practice session. Ah, Sakura's place. She's the captain of the archery club, isn't she? I had a chat with her just earlier too. Techniques to manage people, behaving like a leader and things like that. She recalls the encounter. While I'm still seemingly blessed with a dignified Ilya, I want to ask her about Sakura as well. I'll be grateful if you were to help Sakura out same as you would for me. But of course, as a big sister, I have to look out for your protege and little sister. Okay, so now she says she's the big sister. Good grief, it sure is tough to have a big kid like her that needs this much care. Big sister, huh? I guess that's her way of saying that she acts beyond her age sometimes. And the little sister that needs to be looked after must be Fujine. Ah, uh, Senpai. And Ilya-san too. Good afternoon, Sakura. I came to watch for a bit. Is it alright if I come in? Yes, certainly. How about you, Senpai? That's right. For now, mission accomplished. I don't have any more business to take care of at the dojo. Ah, thanks. Please take care of Ilya for me. I still have lots to do, actually. Ah, uh, I see. Well, see you then. See you later, Onichan. Ilya sends me off with a smile. Alright then. I hate to leave, but it's time to go to work. Okay, well, nothing to do today, so all we can do is call it a day, I guess. Hopefully there's something important that we can do today. Wow, literally nothing to do at the uh, Emia residence. Okay, there is something important that is going to happen at the big bridge, so I guess we should go there. Since I'm already loitering out in the city, I'll try walking across the bridge. A clear sky. The sunlight makes it a bit warm, and the breeze from the ocean cools my cheeks just right. It's the start of the three-day weekend, and it's just the right Saturday weather for the perfect picnic. Oh, looks like there's something going on over there. I see a group of children in the park. There's quite a few of them. They brought bats, soccer balls. In fact, there's no way they could use all those toys within one day. Having broken up into East and West teams, they are now competing against each other. Okay, so baseball or... I guess baseball and soccer. Feeling the mood to just bask in the sun, I lean against the railing and observe the epic battle unfolding in the park. After some twists and turns, it, lo it looks like they decided that the match for the morning would be in basketball. Each force would select their finest and ensure the game rises above the ranks of mere child's play. Cheering, booing, excitement, disappointment. Now that I look around, there are many people sitting on the grass, caught up in the thrill of the game along with the kids. Looks like I'm not the only spectator here. Ah, uh, why not? There might be the usual bit of danger with the Holy Grail Warp, but having a little diversion like this isn't too bad. Time that's neither particularly fun nor boring is not always so easy to come by. A particularly loud cheer comes from the park. The game is over. It was a tight race, but, but the team that controlled the game wasn't the one with the three oversized primary schoolers. It was actually the one with the West Force, with an extremely orthodox formation. I knew it. That kid got the flow of the game totally under control. The players on the winning team were all average, but it was their leader that stood out. The little commander didn't just issue accurate orders to his teammates, he also let out more than enough brilliance as an ace player. Besides, being a foreigner, with bright blonde hair, it would be strange if he didn't stand out. The little blonde commander seems to be their idol. He praises everybody's work with a smile, all while they crowd around him after the game. With that much attention, it would only be natural for him to start bragging, but he isn't. He really is the perfect boy. Huh? For just an instant, our eyes meet. I've got good eyesight, but eye-to-eye -eye contact at this distance has to be just a figment of my imagination, or so I thought. Huh? 
he's coming here. Excusing himself a bit, the blonde boy goes right towards the stairs leading up to the bridge, cutting straight through the park. Oh, that's Gilgamesh. That's child Gilgamesh. Good morning. Uh, I accidentally make a mindless response. Oh, at this time of day, should I say good afternoon? Okay, I'll do it again. Good afternoon, Onisan. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon. I follow suit automatically. The blonde kid rewards me with a happy smile. Crap. I seriously don't remember him. I don't remember ever being greeted by a strange boy. To make matters worse, he came all the way from the park just to see me. I wrecked my brain, having obviously met him before. I'm really sorry. I don't know who you are at all. Have we met before? Oh, you don't remember me? The boy looks at me with a surprised expression. I feel really, really guilty, but I don't have a clue, sadly. Huh, I see, Onisan. You seem to be the dense sort. I guess it'll take you a bit, but we have already met each other many times. Well, I might have been wearing something a little bit different, though. You were wearing different clothing? No, if it was just clothing, I wouldn't have forgotten about a kid this distinctive. Hmm, not really clothing, but appearance? Well, even to me, everything from back then does feel like someone else's affairs. Like we're the same, but there isn't much common ground. I'm getting even more confused. I guess he's talking about the uh, his other uh, the other incarnations of Gilgamesh, you know, <laughs> in the other um, the other timelines. I guess he you know he remembers the other timelines where you know he was Gilgamesh fighting in the war, or whenever he you know the other loops we went through when he talked to us. The blonde kid frowns and continues reluctantly. I'll give you a hint. I'm the person Onisan probably hates the most. That should narrow it down quite a bit, right? Onisan, you have just as many people that you don't get along with as anyone else, but there shouldn't be that many people that you hate. There isn't even a hint of sarcasm in the boy's voice. Even knowing that he's disliked, his smile is still just as sincere. His blood red eyes look straight at me. Wait a minute. Red eyes and golden hair. Yeah, I think I know one guy that fits that profile. Ugh. Nah, can't be. It can't be, but this boy somehow looks, no, more like there are parts of him that are similar to that guy. Uh, did he have a little brother by any chance? Unfortunately, I have no blood relatives. I've always wanted to have a sibling or a spouse, though. An innocent, angelic smile. Ah, but please don't worry. Saber-san isn't my type yet. Well, if I lose to her, something unexpected may still happen. But for now, I'm not pursuing her. The water in my brain just evaporated. <laughs> so basically, this blonde boy is that. I'm him. It was along the lines of, What an infantile mess. I refuse to put up with this nonsense. So it looks like I drank a youth potion. I really don't get it myself. Oh, so he... So he drank a potion that made him go back in age. And I, I guess both physically and mentally. That's weird. No way. This can't be right. No, this really couldn't be right. No, even if there was some mistake, this really, really couldn't be right. I mean, how could he have been such a nice little kid when he was young? Oh, Nissan, I know what you're thinking. I did ask a lot of other people and got the same reaction. I know it's my fault. It'd be funny if he, like, went around asking the other servants. It's like, do you know who I am? Why do I end up doing things that make people hate me? Hard to answer even though it's about myself. No, because it's about my own self. Size the blonde boy. Uh. Oh, everyone's calling me. See you later, Onisan. Oh, and you shouldn't do anything dangerous by yourself. Hmm. I think it would be a good idea to do a lot of other stuff first. If you do that, I'll be able to go back to my old self, too. That's a kind of vague answer. What the hell are we supposed to be doing? Just random shenanigans? Just random things? I mean, that's kind of what we have been doing. With a polite bow, the little blonde kid is about to leave. Oh, wait, what do you mean? I'm sorry, I can't tell you. I was told by my master that I couldn't tell you the answer. Wait, who the hell's his master? It can't be Kiritsugu, can it? Like, or not Kir that Kiritsugu, ah, uh, Kire. Isn't he? Yeah, he hasn't shown up at all. He, I'm, I'm assuming he's not even, he, he's not even in this. Remember? I have a past record. I was told to stay put until Lancer died. But there I went, off to see Saber-san. Why do I have to end up doing that kind of stuff? 
Huh. So I guess he's still acting like Kier is his master, but I don't know if he's in this or not. I, I don't think he is. I haven't seen him. What? That was during the Holy Grail War half a year ago when he impaled Castor. But... Master, but Kodamine isn't here anymore. I know that for sure. Yes, even if all the servants are remaining, even if the masters are here who shouldn't be, Kodamine Kyrie alone is definitely dead. Yes, that's right. My master is Kodamine. But Kodamine is certainly dead. He's already gone. Because of that, Kodamine Kyrie has nothing to do with this current situation. You should just think of me as part of the peanut gallery. Yep, I really have nothing to do with this incident. The blonde boy runs down the stairs. The children rejoice at the return of their idol. As I watch the scene, stunned as I am, I lock in the fact that this boy is him in my memory. Of course, not that it makes any damn sense. Hmm. Huh. So maybe he was referring to Karen instead of uh, Kire. Because as we know, Karen is actually related to, uh, um, to uh, Kire. Okay, so there's something new in Saber's room. So maybe we should check that out. Oi, Saber. Hey, Saber. Oh, she's not here? Strange. I followed her all the way here from the living room. She should be here. Huh? As I hold my chin to think, I think I hear a voice coming from inside. <laughs> Giggling can be heard from the other side of the screen door. Hey, so you are there. I'm coming in, Saber. Say something if you don't want me to. Oh my god. Having warned her, I slide the door open. As I thought, she was there all along. She's standing up straight, yet wearing an expression several times more gentle than normal while holding the plushie I bought for her a while back. It seems like Saber didn't notice me entering. She's still smiling at the plushie. Saber? Saber? <laughs> That's not suspicious at all. Since it seemed like she hadn't noticed me, I called out to her the second time. Then an expression of pure shock appeared on her face, and she began to panic. For reasons unknown to me, Saber hurriedly searches around her. She then stuffs the plushie into the futon beside her, and, taking a deep breath, finally faces towards me. By now, she has returned to the regular Saber. Yes, do you need something, Shiro? Uh, no, yeah, um, about that. What were you doing just now? Nothing, nothing in particular. She answers right away. No, it really didn't look like nothing, and on top of that, didn't she just hide the plushie? But... But what, Shiro? Are you saying you saw something? Her restless eyes are asking, you didn't see anything strange just now, did you? Alright then. If that's the case, I'm going to tease her, just a little bit. No, nope, didn't see anything. Like Saber smiling at the plushie, making it dance around, <laughs> and talking to it as if it was a little kid, or anything like that. What? Yeah, it's okay. I won't tell everyone about Saber sleeping with the plushie either. Of course, I've never seen her doing that, but it seems like it hit the mark. Did I push it too much? I'll go on just a bit further. Oh no, there's nothing strange about talking to dolls or plushies. It's proof of one's kind nature. It shows you're in touch with your inner child, too. A grown adult collecting dolls and taking care of them like they're alive could even be considered a high-class hobby. Uh, what? Oh god. You went too far, Shiro. For some unknown reason, wind started blowing from within the room. Is that so, Shiro? There's a faint smile on Saber's face. The wind seems to be coming from the direction where Saber is standing. Oh god. Is she about to, is she about to uh, summon Excalibur? Is it Saber? I think we just died. We just died, didn't we? <laughs> Man, there really is nothing to do at night now. It's just like, you know, all I can do is go to sleep. Okay, we need to... We need to make something happen today. We need to make some kind of progress. Uh, okay, so there's the temple, the Emmy residence, the shopping district. What's going on in the temple? Riders in the woods. Okay. Uh... The shopping district, um, okay, let's, so we could either talk to Caster or we could talk to Ryder in the woods. Let, let's go talk to Ryder. Turning my back towards the temple, I head for the forest in the back. The back road leading to the temple is one of my favorite walking routes. 
Avoiding the path that goes through the vast cemetery, I stroll around the periphery. Suddenly. Is that really you, Shiro? A familiar voice stops me. Uh, Ryder, why are you here? Something was bothering me, and I came to investigate. Ryder comes out of the bushes. Seeing the old black clothes, my, my body stiffens before I realize it. Old experience, I guess. Maybe a bit nervous by reflex. Shiro, why are you in this place? Huh? Oh, just taking a walk. You know Issei at the Ryodo Temple? We use it all the time. But never mind that. What was it that's bothering you? Ryder does not answer. Did a thought cross her mind? Her pointed gaze from beyond the mask is still aimed at me. Not quite murderous, but the coldness in her eyes is almost hostile. It might as well be a snake staring at me. Though I'm sure she's not using her mystic eyes, I'm already starting to feel paralyzed. No, I must have been wrong. Since you have walked around here a lot, traces of your presence are probably lingering about. Ryder? I apologize, Shiro. I would be grateful if you could forget what I have just said. The tension starts to fade. To amend her hostility from a moment ago, Ryder smiles gently. If you say so, I won't ask. Should I perhaps not ask why you were here either? No, that one is not a problem. The reason for my visit is that I felt a disturbance in the ley line. Being Caster's domain, a variety of magical traces are here, but this new twist is not one of her doing. I suspected the influence of another master or servant at first, but that appears to not be the case either. She felt a disturbance in the force. Another servant. You didn't just have a fight with Assassin at the gate, did you? No, I passed through the gate with nothing but a normal greeting. You mean a hello kind of greeting? Right or not. Some gatekeeper he is. Assassin's self-confidence is only matched by his ability to detect malicious intent. Pardon me. It seems this outfit is putting an undue pressure on you, Shiro. It does let me concentrate, but since it bothers you, should I perhaps revert back to my ordinary clothing? Uh, no, it's fine. That aside, when you mentioned a disturbance in the ley line, what kind of disturbance? Can you not feel it? Now that she asks, I concentrate on my senses. While I cannot perceive the flow of magical energy, I can tell if there are other abnormalities or torn seams in the wind around me. Using not technique, but intuition, not theory, but instinct, I probe around the entire structure of the mountain. First of all, I feel a deep aura around the mountains. Being Fuyuki's lifeline, it's natural. Overlapping each other, all sorts of arteries run on top of that. It's cleverly disguised, but I guess that's Caster's barrier. Other than that, I can't really feel anything unusual. I raise my head. Covering her face as if deep in thought, Ryder seems to be irritated. Is that so? If you cannot feel it, then something is wrong not with this mountain, but with my own self. Assuming the odd one is me, it is probably closer to this side than I thought. This side. Those words can be nothing but an ill omen. But clenching her teeth, Ryder shakes her head in denial and turns to me again. Do not worry about it. It has nothing to do with you, Shiro. I am a divine creature with a strong connection to the earth to start with. It is no wonder I would be sensitive to the disturbances in the ley line. It was a bit much this time, and the uncomfortable feeling made me overreact. That is all. Yes, thinking it over, it is just a feeling of discomfort that I could not really place. Like a mosquito descending on your bare shoulder, minor and vaguely uncomfortable. You can blow it off in one breath, but it still annoys you for some time after. Ryder is unusually talkative, as if she's persuading herself, tr trying to brush off whatever is worrying her. But no matter how trivial it is, it still bothers you. This isn't related to how this Holy Grail War got restarted, is it? Rest assured, this issue is mine alone. Neither you nor Sakura would be harmed by it. No, if it does come to that, as before, this time for sure I must protect the two of you. Ryder murmurs, failures of the past still in mind. Ryder, what the heck is wrong with you? You're acting strange. Whatever's bothering you, well, to each his own. I won't ask you about it. But if there's anything at all you want to talk about, I'd like to do my best to help. Uh, uh, no, that was just thinking out loud. It's not like it has anything to do with you or Sakura. I'm just projecting myself onto you two. In a haste, she starts mingling words. I feel bad for her, but Ryder is kind of charming this way. She always feels so much older than me, yet somehow she, lo she looks like a girl around my age right now. 
Anyway, please leave Sakura's safety to me, Shiro. Yeah, thanks, Ryder. Probably sensing my absolute faith, she finally manages a smile. If anything were to happen, Sakura should be safe with Ryder around. Thank you. Also, while I should not be saying this, Sakura is not the only person I guard. Even you, Shiro, are under my protection. Oh? Why is that? Even though Ryder is Sakura's servant? Well, it does not matter. Protecting Sakura includes protecting you. That is how it is. Ryder turns away, pouting. Funny, did I say something wrong? Well then, with that, I am done here. What about you, Shiro? I'll walk around the temple for a little longer. Ah, will you go for a prayer? Would the spirits here be offended if I prayed for Sakura's safety? Why would they? Might as well teach you the proper etiquette for a temple visit too. That would be helpful. Then, I am gratefully looking forward to a formal tour of the temple. Okay, so, we talked to Ryder, um, and, uh, wow, there's nothing new happening anywhere, is there? Nothing new at the Big Bridge, nothing new at the Emia residence, um, nothing new at school, just something weird in the seniors' hallway. I guess we should try that, I suppose. Oh, I've already seen this, okay. Well, I guess nothing new at, at all is happening, and probably nothing new at night, too. Let's see. Nope. Man, how are we supposed to progress in this game if they're not giving us anything, you know, anything we can use to progress the plot? Like, we did talk to Kid Gilgamesh, and that seemed to kind of progress uh, the story a bit. I guess. Oh, there's the outskirts. I wonder if this is the... Uh, oh, no, we don't have to play the mini the uh, mini game again. Okay, so the castle courtyard, the salon, so we can... Oh, okay. Um... Something we don't know about in the forest ruins. We can talk to Ilya in the castle courtyard or talk to Ilya or Sakura in the salon. Okay, what's Sakura doing here? I'm very, I'm kind of curious about that. I head towards the castle's parlor. The ceiling here is very high. While Tosuka's and Sakura's mansions are very impressive, this is on a whole new level. Wow. Pushing open the heavy door, I can't help but exclaim in awe. It's magnificent. Hallways, rooms, everything here is done with grandeur. It looks like you could have a gorgeous dinner party here. This is a branch castle used only for the Holy Grail War, and I bet, ma and I bet Magi aren't the most social bunch. What a waste. Ah, that's right. The moment I see the brilliantly shining chandelier, I remember. Sakura did mention wanting to have a meal someplace extravagant. This castle would do nicely for that. In that case, first, I have to consult the mistress of the castle. How exactly should I do this? Hey, mind lending me your dining room or something? The goal is dinner with Sakura. Now then, for some reason, Ilya is nice to Sakura, but will it really be that easy to get her approval? Ilya, are you there? Shiro, it's alright, come in. Worrying about how to broach the subject, I enter the room. What's wrong, Shiro? Couldn't find the washroom or something? I sort of remember where it is. Wait, that's not what this is about, Ilya. Okay, what's up, Shiro? Um, that is... I know this is kind of impolite to ask, but... Cutting straight to the point isn't particularly tactful. Well, getting right down to business is better than lying to her. It's okay. I know you have bad manners already. You saying that helps a lot. So, this is a castle, right? No, really? Yes, what about it? Uh, this is rather sudden, but I want to have dinner here. Just for two, if possible. Oh god, is she gonna misunderstand and think you're asking her to have dinner with you? <laughs> oh god, she is. No. <laughs> with Sakura, that is. <laughs> well, she's drawn with like the chibi art style. <laughs> Sudden mood change. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't mind me anymore. She seems to be saying while well, looking like a stricken bunny. Mm -hmm. Huh. A castle date with Sakura? Why? Date. A date, huh? I guess you would call it a date. 
Well, that's kind of vague, but if that's all right. It doesn't matter. Go sit over there, Shiro. Totally outmatched. I accept my defeat and do as I'm told. I made a little promise with Sakura. One day, we'd dress up and eat dinner someplace extravagant. Thinking about it, you know, this place qualifies better than anywhere else. Really? This is only a villa, so it's fairly modest. Modest. <laughs> Good. If this is modest, I wonder where my house would rank. No, this is plenty extravagant. In fact, I bet this is the most extravagant castle in Japan, much less Fuyuki. I say that without flattery. Indifferent towards my praise of her castle, Ilya starts pondering something. I see. Sakura, huh? The place is fine, but what are you going to do about the clothes? Uh, I have no idea, actually. As long as the place is set up, it's okay if I just consult with Sakura over what to wear, right? In other words, you just thought of that. I hate to admit it, but yeah, sorry to trouble you. Yeah, that's definitely Shiro-like. Hmm, dressing up Sakura, huh? Her arms folded behind her back, she's lost in thought. Yeah, you two I'd have to do that for. Meaning? If this was a date with Reen, it'd be out of the question. Well, if it's Sakura, I'll go along with it. Also... After all, Sakura is the one I have to support. And you are the one I need to look after, Shiro. Isn't that right, Onichan? Ugh, what a useless brother I am. Still, there's no one else I can ask. Having stoically endured the worthless older brother branding, I'm now expected to ask the splendid little sister for a favor. So, is that an okay? Yeah, so let's have a dinner party tonight. We should have lots of fancy clothing stored somewhere. I'll let you borrow them. Really? Suddenly, everything's looking up. Indeed, why wouldn't they have dresses in a castle? Meaning the clothes part is taken care of. Thank you, Ilya. I'm so happy I want to give you a big hug right now. For some reason, Ilya seems to be suppressing a strange giggle. Did I do anything weird? <laughs> What, you haven't noticed yet? What is it? Ilya circles around while surveying me. I have a bad feeling about that smile. Shiro, do you plan on coming to the dinner party at our castle wearing that? These clothes will be fine for dinner. No, I'd better check and make sure. Sweatshirt, jeans, and sneakers. Wait, wouldn't it be bad if I don't change? It's too late to act surprised. There's no point in Sakura dressing up if you're wearing that, right? I get it, but still, I don't have a suit in the first place. Would it be better if I wore the Homurahara uniform? That's somewhat better as an outfit. Hey Shiro, just like you were going to dress Sakura up, what I actually agreed to was seeing you try a few outfits on, you know? Ilya giggles cheerfully. <laughs> I feel like she wants to put my consciousness into some strange doll for her to play with. Did I dig my own grave by chance? Well, she did... Do something like that in one of the, uh, bad ends, I think. <laughs> Shiro, I won't ask you to come dress for an imperial dinner, but it's not good to completely ignore manners. It is dinner at a castle, after all, so I... Besides, I'm sure Sakura wants to see you dressed up as well. Okay, it's decided. Sela, Liz! Oh boy. She only has to clap her hands once for the maids to appear. Are they ninjas or something? That's how fast they came. They were probably like eavesdropping, <laughs> sure, listening in. How may I be of service, milady? Prepare a tuxedo for Shiro. One with a black tie, white collared shirt, and leather shoes. When you finish, prepare a dress for Sakura and make preparations for tonight's dinner. As you wish, milady. Ilya, this too much? Right, Shiro may resist, but dress him forcibly if necessary. I don't like where this is going. Right in front of my eyes, the preparations proceed without a hitch. To think I get stuck wearing a tuxedo. Not only do they have fancy dresses on hand, but even tuxedos for men. That's the Einsburns for you. Wait, this isn't the time to be impressed. First, we need to take Emiya-sama's measurements. Lisa Rett. Got it, Sela. Oh my god. I don't know where in that dress Liz was carrying the measuring tape she just produced. <laughs> tape in hand, Sela measures me like I'm an eyesore of an obstacle to overcome. Are you sure I'm fit for this, Ilya? 
Just surrender and accept it. You want to see Sakura in a dress, don't you? This is the law of equivalent exchange. That was quite a magus like statement. Though, thinking about it, wearing a tuxedo is pretty cheap in comparison. Right, I need to go tell Sakura about this. You don't need to worry, I'll send Sakura a written invitation. You'll get one too, of course. A written invitation. This is the real deal. A real dinner party would involve delivering these invites in advance, but I could never imagine getting involved in something like that. Sorry for all the trouble. It's fine. It's for the sake of you two, after all. <laughs> She's really enjoying planning this. Liz and Sella seem to be wasting no time preparing the outfit, so I have to prepare for the worst. Emiya-sama, the clothing has been prepared. Please come this way. Yeah, Ilya, I'm sure you'll laugh after seeing me in these fancy clothes. I wonder about that. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be a disaster. <laughs> uh. It's tiring to wear something you're not used to. I feel like I'm constantly being strangled in this collared shirt and bow tie. I look into the mirror in front of me. Seeing myself in a black tuxedo is really uncomfortable. I've never even worn a suit, and this ceremonial outfit is way past that. Besides, there's the problem of Sakura's dress. I haven't even had a peek at it. When I went to Sakura's room, Ilya stopped me and just said, look forward to when you see her. With that, I'm waiting in the lobby for Sakura to finish getting ready. Soon, the promised time comes. <laughs> it suits you well, Shiro. Oh, it's just you, Ilya. Are you not dressing up? I'm not part of high society yet. This is semi-formal. But look at you. Aren't you just perfect now? I don't have a clue. I can't really judge whether or not this tuxedo looks any good. I have no idea. This is my first time doing something like this. Really? This look isn't the normal you, but it's interesting in its own way. After that, it should be the princess's debut. Princess? Does she mean Sakura? I turned my attention to the grand staircase. The preparations were being made on the upper floor, so I expect her to come down that way. I'm holding my breath waiting, but Sakura's not coming. Maybe she got lost. As if. Apparently tired of waiting, Ilya calls out. Sakura? What's wrong? Uh, um, Senpai's right there, isn't he? Only her voice reaches me. I'm glad she's actually there, but I do wonder why she won't show herself. She's probably embarrassed. He's here, and in a tuxedo, too. Uh, it, is that right? But I, I don't look good in this, so that is... Huh? Could it be that you are embarrassed even after coming this far, Sakura? Look at that. Sakura's embarrassed too. Getting invited to a fancy dress-up dinner party out of the blue. I bet she'd be just as shy as I am, if not more. <laughs> and you were so into it just a little while ago, saying how glad Senpai would be to see you in that dress, weren't you? I ilya san but, but Senpai? Well, this outfit doesn't really suit me either, so it's all good. Besides, you wouldn't look bad in anything. Certainly not any worse than me in a tuxedo. Senpai, um, could you please not laugh? You too, don't laugh when you see me. Jeez, you two are making me mad. Don't worry, Sakura. That's the best evening dress in the house. If Shiro laughs, I'll make sure to give him an appropriate punishment. Yeah, she'll probably kill us. She whispers to me that the reverse is also true. It can't be helped if I'm laughed at, so I whisper to her to be gentle. Right, then... Senpai. I hear the rustling of a dress. Sakura appears above the hall. Okay, they're leaving us in suspense. Oh, okay. <laughs> like the picture of a lady straight out of a movie. A dress with a large amount of exposure around the shoulders. Pearls and hair ornaments to accentuate her white skin. Lips made up with rouge. And above all, the very fact of witnessing Sakura's first dress appearance is blinding. We both look over each other and have no words to say. Sakura is just standing still. Hey, Shiro, get it together and escort her, or do you plan on making a girl feel embarrassed? An elbow pokes me in the back. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Thus prompted, I move forward. Ilya's like trying to be our wingman here. <laughs> Calming my breathing a little, I ascend the stairs. Seeing Sakura like that, what should I say? 
Yeah, it suits you well, Sakura. Um, you too, senpai. It's my first time seeing you dressed so sharply. Is that so? Yeah, I guess it is. I don't even own a suit after all. Having never cared about it until now, I do feel a tinge of regret. It's not just her outfit, but Sakura even smells different. Taking a breath, I notice that it isn't the usual perfume she's wearing. This doesn't suit me at all. If Tosaka sees me, she'll laugh. That's not true. The way Aesan is, because this is your best, she'd freeze up rather than laugh, even if you tell her to. Um, I... I also feel the same. Senpai, looking at you makes me feel immensely happy. Sakura looks down as her cheeks turn red. Why would it make you happy? That is, if someone should be happy, that's gotta be me. Because, um... You look like you became a prince on a white horse, senpai. Oh my god, this is so cheesy. <laughs> I always yearn for a dashing man to come for me. Still anxious, Sakura extends her hand timidly. Her fingers, covered in a silk glove, touch my arm. Um, your arm. May I, senpai? Of course, but I still can't believe we're really doing this. Oh my god. Sakura is next to me, her arm entwined with mine. We're in the main hall of the Einsburn Castle, with Sakura in a dress. It's just like a... There's no way this is happening in Japan. I know, it's as if we're in a fairy tale. Ever since I was a little girl, I thought it'd be so lovely to go to a ball in a beautiful castle. And like a fairy tale, we even have a real witch here. <laughs> the evil witch you two are teasing is Reed. I'm helping you out, so I'm the good witch. Ilya speaks with pride. With Sakura one step ahead of me, I escort her down the stairs. The hem of Sakura's dress is quite long and just brushes up against the floor. Mm, I was getting a little worried, but you two look pretty good. Sweet and innocent. Not bad at all. Th thank you, Ilya-san. Sorry about all the trouble. Yes, yes, you can tell me all that later. Dinner is ready, so come this way. Playing the hostess's role, Ilya bows and leads us on. My arm is linked with Sakura's the entire way. I may be anxious, but I can also feel Sakura's racing heartbeat through my arm. This isn't the time to be flustered. There's silverware already on the table. Ilya's seat as the castle's mistress is at the head of the table, while Sakura and I are facing each other on the opposite sides of the middle. If there were more guests lined up here, this would be quite a sight. Ah, and then, gallantly serving us are Sela and Liz. The moment I realize that this marks the beginning of a formal dinner, I'm unable to calm down. Looking at her, Sakura is just as awkward. <laughs> Senpai, I really can't calm down. Neither can I. It'd be easier if someone had taught me table manners. It's fine. I won't tell you to put green peas on your fork or to peel an orange with a knife and fork. Ilya giggles while picking up a glass. In our glasses as well, Sela and Liz pour us an aperitif. This really is a genuine dinner. Now then, I'd like to thank you for coming to my dinner party. Shiro and Sakura. Moreover, it's great that the clothes I picked out suit you so well. That's very kind of you. I can't extend proper hospitality to you today, but do make yourselves feel at home. Okay, next is Shiro's turn. These turns are like a card game. Eh? I have to prepare a speech before a dinner like this? Isn't that usually for the guest of honor? Uh, well... My head is totally blank. For the time being, I take my glass in my hand, meaninglessly swirling the white liquid inside. That is, thank you for granting my entirely unreasonable request and letting us use this splendid place. I'd like to return this favor someday, Ilya. And Sakura, um, well, are you enjoying it? This is about all I can think of. Uh, I am happy, very happy. This dress is beautiful. Senpai looks great, and having dinner in this splendid castle is, to me, oh. Uh, uh, I shouldn't cry, but I'm so happy. Thank you, Senpai, Ilya-san. I'm just happy to be here, that's all. Thank you, Sakura. There isn't much else I can help you with, but I am glad that you enjoy it. Then, cheers. The dinner begins. One refined dish comes after another, accompanied by flavorful wine. 
Ilya looks on in a satisfied way while Sel and Liz respectfully serve the table. Sakura is shy and reserved. On the verge of tears, she looks to be modestly soaking in plain happiness. Phew, that was delicious. That's the cooking of Ilya-san's house for you. Following dinner, after we finished dessert, I ended up escorting Sakura back here. I was surprised too, to think Liz and Sela were that good at cooking. Sela did it? Isn't there a chef? I wonder if there's any way I could learn traditional French cuisine here. Hmm. Suddenly, the topic switches to cooking. How pathetic. Once in a lifetime, Sakura is dressed up and alone with me in this garden. Yet I can't find anything better for us to talk about. Sakura. Senpai? Today you granted my wish, right? Just as I was about to open my mouth, she says that. I suppose so. For some reason I just remembered it, and Ilya agreed to help me. The result was much more than I expected, though. Right. Back then I was just speaking my mind without thinking about it. But you really remembered. That's the talk we had on the way home one day. Walking home with Sakura after eating some sweets, holding on to that secret, I wanted to grant her that little wish. They really caught me by surprise. Ilya-san and her maids coming, preparing the dress while I was still recovering, and then inviting me to a dinner party. Ah, that would definitely be surprising. Sorry, I should have given some warning. <laughs> At first, I wondered what was going on, but when I found out I would be together with Senpai, that's when I knew what this is all about. A very sudden turn of events. Though were it not for Ilya's decisiveness, I doubt it would have happened. Oh. But I had a pretty hard time, too. It didn't occur to me that I'd have to dress up as well. Ah, jeez. This too. Well, whatever. During the dinner, I had to restrain myself from loosening that tie. If Sakura's still dressed up, then the wish isn't over yet. It's a good thing I asked Ilya. I wouldn't have been able to keep that promise by myself. That's true. I couldn't dream of being able to wear a dress like this either. Holding the hem of her dress, Sakura spins around a cherry blossom dancing in the moonlit garden. It really is just like a fairy tale. Wearing this dress, being invited to a dinner party at a castle, senpai coming for me, and then having a late night talk in this garden. Yeah, it's a little much. <laughs> Maybe Ilya-san really is a great witch, using some kind of wonderful sorcery. That's a good way of putting it. However, the way a fairy tale like this usually goes, everything needs to go back to normal. So if it was sorcery, it would have to end sometime, wouldn't it? Yeah, the clock strikes 12 and it disappears. Then I'll leave a glass slipper on the staircase, and Senpai will take it and search for me. But no matter what, the dressed up me won't come back. Well, why is that? That way, it'll be a beautiful memory. Besides, more than dressing up and being with you, I want to be together with you, Senpai, as my normal self, all the time. That wish, no matter how small, was the real one. There is no fairy tale princess. How short-sighted of me. It was never anything that could be thrown together so quickly to begin with. Without choosing to, our bodies touch. Feeling her slender body against mine, I smell the fragrance of Sakura's hair. Our fingers entwine, all by themselves. Senpai, I'm the me you've always known, even now. That's true. Sakura is Sakura. Sorry. I got distracted by your dress and had a stupid misunderstanding because of that. Ah, uh, yes. She raises her voice in agreement. There's no Princess Sakura. She may look like a princess before my eyes, but it's the same Sakura as always. She had avoided making that mistake from the very start. Senpai, is it okay? What do you mean? To always be close to you? Will you let me do that? The Mato Sakura who wants to be near you isn't a princess. She's a plain, shy, clumsy girl who doesn't say what's on her mind. Is that still fine with you, Senpai? Of course. For as long as it is fresh in your mind, as long as the wish is there, these days will not end. Yeah, he's right about that. But she's also jealous of Saber-san's beauty, and a bit sad seeing how well Nesan and Ryder get along with you. Is that still alright? Yeah, I'm fine with that. You're human, so you've got a lot on your mind. That's the Sakura I like, the one I want you to be. Senpai. With an intoxicating whisper, her eyes become moist. Uh, what is it? My chest hurts. If you look at me with those eyes, my face will burn up. 
Well, well yeah, that's so how it is. So let's just take care of each other from now on. Crap. That's not like me at all. That aperitif is making me say some pretty embarrassing stuff. Aren't I acting strange? No, definitely not. Yes, I think you are fine the way you are, senpai. An energetic response. Well, that's a relief. Also, there's another good thing. I'll keep that a secret. What you just said so clearly will be my very own secret. Sakura is bashful. That secret probably has no value to anyone else. All right then, from here on, I'll be in your debt. No, no, I'm in debt to you. Really, thank you for today. She bows timidly. Always the same, no matter what. That's what gives us peace of mind more than anything else. So, I really need to thank Ilya for this. Shall we have a feast for Ilya-san at our place? We can have her wear a long-sleeved kimono. She'll definitely look cute. There should be some formal children's kimonos at Fujine's house. That's a good idea. This time, it'll be Ilya's turn to be surprised. We leave the garden as we talk. Our fingers are intertwined the whole time. We maintain that gentle connection even as we pass through the door to the lobby. Now then, let's stay here tonight. I'll see you to your room. Ah, uh, it's fine. As I thought, it was Ilya-san's sorcery that let us meet like this. We'll part here, and come morning, I'll turn back to the normal Mato Sakura. I see. Yeah, that's for the best. In the morning, I'll revert to my normal self. Good night, Sakura. Good night, senpai. We separate with a light bow to each other. The night as dazzling as our dress comes to an end. Carving this burning feeling into my heart, I head towards my room to face the coming morning. So as to never forget, I blink several times, as if imprinting that image of a beautiful cherry blossom into my eyes. Yeah, but the next morning will never come. And we restart again.